In this problem, we'll solve a second-order differential equation involving the motion of a mass spring damper system. But there's a twist. We need to select a damping value which satisfies these two performance requirements. In the last video, we began to solve the problem. We figured out how to express this forcing function in MATLAB and wrote a custom subfunction which checks if both requirements are met. Now that we have the basic building blocks, we can continue assembling our code. We left off testing a single C value. We set C test equals to C max and saw that it does not satisfy either performance requirement. This should hopefully be obvious. Therefore, we need to pick another C value to test. We can pick any C value between 0 and C max, or about 115 newton seconds per meter or kilograms per second, but I have no clue what number to pick. This is where the experimentation, iteration, and educated guessing comes in. Let's just try setting C test equals to half a C max and see what happens. We obviously satisfy requirement 2, but we're still far from satisfying requirement 1. It's clear that our current damping value of C equals 57-ish is still too restrictive because the velocity after T1 is still too low. If we lower the damping value even more, the velocity should rise. Let's try dramatically reducing the damping value. It seems that even one-tenth of the max allowable C value is still too much damping, but we're making some headway. This definitely confirms our hunch that reducing the damping value generally increases the system's velocity. Once again, this is only true up until C reaches a certain value, but the details of that are beyond the scope of the class. For now, let's keep testing smaller C values. We're getting even closer. We just need to shift this peak up into the permissible band, so we should try an even smaller damping value. Okay, there we go. It looks like C equals 5 newton second per meter, or kilograms per second, satisfies both requirements. I bet if we decrease C test even more, the peak velocity will eventually exceed the upper velocity limit. Let's see if I'm right. Sure enough, reducing the C value from 5 to 4 makes the peak forward velocity no longer lie within the allowable range. That means our permissible range of C values falls somewhere between 4 and 8 kilograms per second. Through some very educated guess and checks, we've whittled down the possible C range from 0 to 115, all the way down to 4 to 8. We can be more accurate. Let's see if we can find all the permissible C values to two decimal places. Let's write a for loop to test every C value between 4 and 8 kilograms per second in increments of 0.01 kilograms per second. We're basically going to brute force our way into a more refined range. This is what's known as a sweep test because we're sweeping through and testing a bunch of C values within a pre-specified range. I already wrote some code declaring some storage variables. We're going to start sweeping at C equals 4 kilograms per second, end at 8 kilograms per second, and increment our C value by 0.01 kilograms per second. We're going to write a for loop which calls both the mck function and the check requirements function. In each iteration, we'll store the results of both requirement checks and the corresponding elements of these three variables. But before that, I'm going to quickly comment out the fprintf statements in the check requirements function just so we don't clog the command window when we run the code. I want to see how long it takes for the bulk of the code to run, so I'm also going to go back to the start of the script and uncomment the tick statement. We'll add the necessary talk statement in just a second. Now let's go ahead and write the for loop.
Within the for loop, we call the mck function to obtain the current iteration's position and velocity. In the previous mck function call, I ignored the t output, but I'm leaving it in just because I know it won't affect the results. We then pass the velocity and current c value into the check requirements function, then store the results in the appropriate vectors. Immediately after the end statement, I put the talk statement. When I ran the code, MATLAB printed out the runtime from the tick statement to the talk statement. It took about 5 seconds to run everything between the tick and the talk. Obviously, the time may differ for you based on your computer specifications. We now have a third figure window. The upper subplot plots the peak forward velocity after time t1 versus the damping coefficient we swept. From the looks of it, we fall within the permissible range when c equals about 4.25 to about 6.25 kilograms per second. On the bottom subplot, I have a graph showing whether requirement 1 was met in Boolean form. I'm only plotting whether requirement 1 was met because we know that by default requirement 2 is also met. Instead of plotting the c values on the x-axis, I plotted the iteration number from the for loop. It seems like we started to satisfy requirement 1 around the 25th iteration of the for loop, and stopped around the 250th iteration, which just about matches up to c equals 4.25 and 6.25 because we started at c equals 4 kilograms per second and incremented the c value in each iteration by 100th of a kilogram per second. The last thing we can do is write a couple more lines of code to extract the permissible c values instead of trying to pick them off the plot. The minIndex variable calls the find function to retrieve the index at which we first satisfy requirement 1, then we actually find the corresponding c value and store it in the cmin variable. The same process is repeated for the cmax variable, but we need to add the last flag to the find statement to indicate that we want to find the last location which satisfies requirement 1. Upon rerunning the code, we can see that we have cmin equals 4.21 and cmax equals 6.17 which is pretty close to the values we got from figure 3. This concludes the mass spring damper design problem. To recap, we solved a traditional mass spring damper problem, but changed the damping value C until the system met two performance requirements. These types of problems are widespread in engineering and are far more interesting than your standard vanilla textbook problem. Like most of my codes, they are written with parameter flexibility in mind. I strongly encourage you to play around with this code to gain more insight into the mass spring damper system. For example, you could fiddle with the velocity bounds and try to find the new satisfactory set of C values. Or you could change the step size of the sweep test and see how the program's runtime is affected. I personally did this and found that decreasing the step size by just one order of magnitude made the runtime go from seconds to minutes. There's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with design problems like these, and it's a personal favorite of mine in this class. See you next time.